In this video, I will show you how to use passphrases with your cold card mark four. This video is part of the cold card guides. You can find all these guides on my channel and in the link in description. Before we get started, it is really important that you understand how passphrases work. Otherwise, you could shoot yourself in the foot and lose all of your Bitcoin. So let me start by explaining how passphrases work. When you first set up your cold card, it would have generated 12 or 24 words. Those words back up all your Bitcoin. And if your cold card is lost or stolen or broken, those words can recover your funds. Now, cold card allows you to add a passphrase on top of those 12 or 24 words, which generates a completely new and unique Bitcoin wallet. To recover funds in this wallet, you will need the 12 or 24 words and the passphrase. If you lose that passphrase, you cannot access the Bitcoin. So it is super important that you write down your passphrase correctly. So for example, 12 words plus the word South would make wallet A with fingerprint A. 12 words plus Southern Bitcoiner would make wallet B with fingerprint B. And 12 words with Southern Bitcoiner with capital S and capital B will make wallet C which is a completely different wallet, even though it is the same word, just with capitals. Again, it is super important that you write down your passphrase correctly, because if you enter the wrong passphrase, it will open a completely separate wallet that does not have your Bitcoin inside. One final thing to note is that your cold card stores your seed phrase, which would be your 12 or 24 words, but it does not store the passphrase. You will need to load the passphrase every time you wish to spend Bitcoin. All right, so let's move over to the cold card and take a look at how to set up your passphrase with your cold card. All right, here I have my cold card unlocked and I already have a 24 word seed phrase loaded on this device. If you don't have seed words loaded already, I suggest you watch my video, how to set up your cold card or how to generate a seed phrase with dice rolls. So to add a passphrase on top of my seed words, what I want to do is scroll down to passphrase over here, then I click on that. And now it's going to tell us what exactly a passphrase is. It says, you may add a passphrase to your BIP39 seed words. This creates an entirely new wallet for every possible passphrase. So what it's saying here is every possible passphrase that I can enter into this device will create a new and unique Bitcoin wallet. So if I continue to scroll down, it says, by default, the cold card uses an empty string as the passphrase. So by default, the passphrase is basically set to nothing. So it only uses your seed words plus a blank passphrase. So if I continue to scroll on the next menu, you can enter a passphrase by selecting individual letters, choosing from the word list or by typing numbers. And if I continue scrolling, it says, please write down the fingerprint of all your wallets so you can confirm when you've got the right passphrase. And then it says, if you are writing down the passphrase as well, it's okay to put them together. There's no way for the cold card to know if your passphrase is correct. And if you have it wrong, you will be looking at an empty wallet. And here it says the limitations are 100 characters max, and it is all ASCII characters. All right, so now it says here, click okay to start, X to go back, or two to hide this message forever. So I want to proceed. I'm going to click this OK button. And now what we can do is actually start telling the cold card what we want our passphrase to be. So as cold card mentioned, we have a few options. If we wanted to, we could just do random letters, maybe something like this. So we could do random letters like CDHM, ZFH, or we could do numbers even if we wanted to. So maybe one, two, three, three, six, one, eight, something like that. Or it also mentioned we could do BIP39 words. So those would be words from the BIP39 word list, which is a list of 2048 words. And cold card did say that it recommends that option. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use words from the BIP39 word list. And that would look something like this, a series of words. So for example, air, then any, then cabin, 
or they could have capital letters if you wanted. So it could be air, any, cabin. So what you would need to do is set a standard and stick to that standard. For example, you may say, I'll do all lowercase and no spaces, or you could say the first letter must be uppercase with no spaces or whatever your heart desires. What I suggest you do is this option here, keep everything lowercase and don't put any spaces. I also suggest you do six words that are randomly selected from the BIP39 word list. What you could do is generate a 12 word seed phrase on your cold card, write down the first five or six words, then erase that seed, create a new one, and then use those first five words as your passphrase. So again, I suggest you do five or six words, probably six words to be a bit safer. So I'm going to quickly randomly generate some words. I'll write them down here and then I'm going to insert them into my cold card. All right, so here are my five words that I'm going to use as my passphrase. So now on the cold card, what we do is we select add word because we're adding BIP39 words. If you were just typing something like this over here at the top manually, you would need to click add or uh, edit phrase. But again, I'll be using BIP39 words. So I click on add word. And now I need to type in my word. So my first word is rival. So I scroll down until I see R. There I see R, so I click on that. And next up is I. So I scroll down to I over here, click on that. And then V, so I scroll down to R, I, V. There it is all the way at the bottom. I click on that. And then here rival is at the top. So I click on rival. Now cold card is basically going to ask us what standard we will use. If we'll use capitals or we're gonna use spaces or what. So here the one all the way at the top is lowercase. The second one starts with capital. The third one is all caps. And the fourth option, option is space rival. The fifth one is space capital R rival. And the last one is space rival all caps. So the standard we set is no capitals with no space. Of course, you're welcome to do your own standard, but here I'm going to click rival all the way at the top because it's no space and no caps. So I click on that. And now I need to click on add word. We've added our first word. We need to add the next one. So I click add word. And my second word is tell. So I scroll down to T, there's T, I click on T. Next, I click on E, and then there is tell. So I click on tell. Now again, the standard I have set is no capitals with no spaces. So I click on the first option at the top. Now what I'm going to do is add my third word and I'll be back when all five words are in the cold card. All right, I have entered all my words into the cold card. Now what I'm going to do is scroll down and over here I'm going to click on apply. So it's going to apply that seed phrase onto the cold card now. And this is our fingerprint. Now it's really important you take note of this. It will make your life a lot easier if you have that written down. So I'm going to write it here with my passphrase. All right, here my fingerprint is written down with my passphrase. So what I'm going to do is Go back to the cold card. And if we scroll down here, it says press X to abort and keep editing passphrase, or we can click okay to new use this new wallet, or we can click one to save and use this to our micro SD card. So if you have an SD card inserted into the device, you can actually save that passphrase on that SD card so you won't have to load it up each time. I prefer to rather not have this on the SD card. I like to enter it manually every time. So I'm just going to click OK to proceed. And there we go. Now our passphrase should be loaded on the cold card. To make sure that it is, what we can do is scroll down to advanced forward slash tools. Then what we can do is scroll down to view identity. I click on that and these fingerprints should match and I see they do. 
So there we go, we have now added a passphrase onto our cold card. Now the cold card will operate just like it usually would, except your seed phrase or your private key now has an extra passphrase on top of it. If you have found this video valuable so far, liking and subscribing is greatly appreciated and it helps me keep this channel going. Again, this cold card does not store the passphrase, so as soon as I cut the power off of this device, the passphrase will be wiped. And you'll have to load the passphrase up every time you want to send Bitcoin or just use your wallet. And now what we can do is actually export this wallet that has the fingerprint on top of it to our Sparrow or whatever wallet you wanna use. Now, I already have a video that covers how to use your cold card with Sparrow Wallet in depth. So I'm quickly going to speed through this part. If you have no idea how to use Sparrow with cold card, I suggest you watch that video. To export this wallet onto Sparrow, the first thing I'm going to do is plug in my SD card in the side of the cold card here. And then what we want to do is scroll down to advanced forward slash tools. I click on that and then I scroll down to export wallet. I click on that and now we can export this for Sparrow wallet. Just a note, if you are running an older version of cold card, you will need to select generic JSON. Cold card has updated it so that Sparrow wallet has its own option now, but before this you would click generic JSON. So I click on Sparrow wallet and then I proceed and now it's generating my wallet export to go on the SD card. And there we go, it says Sparrow wallet file written, Sparrow export to dot JSON. So I'm going to proceed and then I'm going to pull out my SD card, uh, cut the power on my cold card and let's move over to the computer. Here I am on my computer, I've got my SD card plugged in over here and I'm going to slide that into my computer. Now, if I open my finder, I should see that SD card over here. Cool, so now I've got this Sparrow file waiting. What I need to do is open Sparrow, then I go file, then I go new wallet, and I set a name for this wallet. So for this video, let's say CC for cold card, and then I'll say passphrase. Cool, now I click create wallet, and then I go air gapped hardware wallet, and I select cold card over here. I click import file, and then I need to select my Sparrow export. The one I exported had a two at the end, .json, so here it is, Sparrow export two .json. I open that, and there we go. I have imported my cold card. All I do is click apply, and then you can set a password if you want. I don't want a password, this video is just for demonstration, so I click no password. One thing you'll notice is that here we can see my fingerprint, which matches the fingerprint I have written down here. So we know we've exported the correct wallet. And now this wallet we see in Sparrow would function just like any other normal Bitcoin wallet would. We can start receiving Bitcoin here. We can see our addresses, our transaction history, and our UTXOs. I have no Bitcoin in this wallet, so let's quickly send some sats to this wallet for demo purposes. And there we go, we've got a notification at the top right saying new mempool transaction for 100,000 sats. So if I go to my addresses, I see my first address has a balance. And if I go to UTXOs, here I have one Bitcoin UTXO. Now let's take a look at how to actually send Bitcoin when your cold card has a passphrase on it. Again, I already cover how to use your cold card with Sparrow in depth in another video, but this video will be passphrase specific. So what I need to do is build the transaction in Sparrow Wallet like I usually would. So to do this, I'm going to click on my UTXO, then click send selected. Now I need to insert an address. So let me get my address quickly. There I have inserted my address. Now I set a label, which I always suggest you do. I'm going to say blue wallet because I'm sending back to blue wallet. Now what I need to do is select a fee rate. I'm just going to adjust this to around 24, we'll leave it at 23.84. Cool, now I click create transaction, finalize for signing. Now we don't have the private key, remember that's on the cold card, so I cannot sign this transaction. What I need to do is save this transaction to my SD card. So my SD card is already plugged in over here. 
I select my SD card and I save that transaction. Now, if we take a look at my SD card, here we can see bluewallet.psbt, which is the partially signed Bitcoin transaction. All right, now I just eject this and then I pull out my SD card and we can move over to the cold card again. Here I have my cold card unlocked and here I have my SD card with that transaction on it. So I'm going to plug that into the device and now we can sign this transaction. But remember, I have just booted this cold card up so it doesn't have the seed phrase loaded. So let's quickly take a look at what would happen if I try to sign this Bitcoin transaction without the passphrase. So I would click ready to sign, then it's picking up that transaction and it says failure, my XFP not involved. XFP stands for extended fingerprint and it's basically this fingerprint that we wrote down here, the A3D1BOAA. So what it's saying here is my cold card doesn't have the credentials to sign this transaction because my seed phrase is not loaded. So I'm going to exit back to the home screen. Now let's take a look at how to actually load up the seed phrase and give it a valid signature. So I go back to passphrase and click on passphrase. And now I click proceed and we have to manually insert our passphrase again. So what I do is go down to add word and then I need to fill in all five words I've got written down here. So first is rival. I scroll all the way down to R. I click on that. Next, I click on I. Then V. All the way at the bottom. And then rivals there at the top. I click on that. It's going to ask which standard I'm using. So either all lowercase or capital to begin with or all caps. Or if I want spaces before. I did the standard with no capitals and no spaces, so I click on the one at the top. Cool, now my next word is tell, so I click add word again, and I scroll all the way down to T. I click on T, then I click on E, and there is tell. I click on that, and I click on the one with no space and no capitals. Now I add my third word, which is fever, and let me quickly do all five words and I'll be back when that is done. <laughs> all right, I've added all five words. Now I scroll down and click on apply over here. And when I click apply, I should see this same fingerprint. So let's see what it says. A3D1BOAA. So yep, I've loaded the correct passphrase. Now I'm going to click proceed. And now we can actually sign this transaction with a valid signature. So if I click on ready to sign, it's going to read my SD card. And there we go. We can now actually send this transaction. It's going to ask, are you okay to send this much Bitcoin to this address? And it's going to tell you the network fee. I'm going to click OK, signing. And then here is my signed transaction. I'm going to proceed and then move over to the computer. So let's pull out the SD card cut the power on my cold card and yeah, onto the computer. Here is my computer, here is my SD card. I'm going to plug that in again. And if I open my finder and click on my SD card, here we can see the signed transaction over here. So what I'm going to do is just delete everything else here. I don't need any of this anymore. I'm gonna move that to bin. All we need is the signed transaction. So let me go back to Sparrow Wallet. Here I have my wallet where I did this transaction. And what I'm going to do is just drag this signed.psbt over to Sparrow and it will automatically pick this up. Then I click broadcast. Oh, sorry, I click close first. Then I click broadcast. And that should broadcast my transaction to the network. Here we can see that was successful. Again, this is just a speed run of how to use cold card with Sparrow. If you would like a more in-depth guide on how to use Sparrow with your cold card, I suggest you watch my other video as well. And that's it. That's how to use your cold card with a passphrase.